Creating Accessible Excel Files Chapter 2 Creating Meaningful Navigation This training video is produced by the Accessibility and Policy Unit of the California Department of Social Services. The basis for these criterion are WCAG 2.4.2 and 1.3.1. The intent of these success criteria is to help users find content and navigate to content by ensuring that sheets, tables, and charts have descriptive names similar to document titles and hyperlinks. Visual users also perceive structure and relationships through various visual cues, such as ta sheet tabs, table borders, chart images, and comment marks within data cells. For the unique composition of Excel sheets and workbooks, we must not only create meaningful and descriptive names for Excel elements where we can, but we must create additional information to help the screen reader user find content and understand the relationship between different elements on the sheet and the workbook. One of the biggest problems with Excel for those who use screen readers are blank cells and non-meaningful naming of elements within the workbook and worksheets. Screen reader users can navigate easily to cell A1. However, if no meaningful navigation is built into the workbook, the screen reader user will typically use arrow keys to navigate cell by cell to try and find information on the sheet. Hearing excess blank cells may create confusion and lead the screen reader user to believe there is nothing on the worksheet or parts of the information on the sheet might easily be missed. A good practice is to use cell A1 to provide directions for visual elements within the sheet. It is easy for us to create and easy for those who may be new to using a screen reader to find this useful information. For example, in cell A1 you could put informational text which reads categories 1 to 4 table starts at cell B3 and ends at cell F7. Categories 5 to 8 table starts at C10 and ends at G14 and there is a key for the tables in D16. However, while this is an improvement over no instructions, this is still not great accessibility. You can make things much easier to find in the worksheet by using cell A1 for guidance. Aligning all elements, in this instance the tables and information key, to column A will allow a screen reader user to arrow down column A and find all the tables. Letting the screen reader user know where the information ends on the sheet is also something helpful that can be added. As a side note, it is okay to merge cells as long as they are not inside a table. Cells are frequently merged in cell A1 and in the cells above the table in order to give a nice clean look. Just make sure again to align the information to column A. To merge cells, highlight the cells you wish to merge and then select Merge in Center which can be found under the Home tab. In addition to aligning all information to cell A1, assigning meaningful names of elements within the Excel file, including sheets, tables, and charts, is required to ensure effective navigation for screen reader users. Screen reader users can search for these elements, but only if meaningful names have been assigned. We will cover meaningful naming of tables and charts in future chapters. Right now, we will talk about meaningful worksheet titles. Creating meaningful worksheet titles is critical for screen reader users. These titles are used to navigate quickly around a workbook and are the first step, in some cases, towards assessing other elements such as, such as charts and comments within worksheets. Screen reader users pull up a list of the worksheets within a workbook and can easily navigate to these worksheets from that list. If worksheet titles are not made to be meaningful, as in the example below, all that will be heard by a screen reader user is sheet 1, sheet 2, and sheet 3. This does not let the screen reader user know what content will be found in those sheets. Creating meaningful worksheet titles will ideally give the screen reader an idea as to what content will be found on each sheet once they navigate to it. Fortunately, creating meaningful worksheet titles is easy to do. Simply select the worksheet title you want to rename and click on it. Then select Rename and edit the title within the tab. Approximately 30 characters will fit. Note, if there is no data on the worksheet, make sure to delete the sheet 
Empty sheets can create confusion and barriers to accessibility. As with Word or PowerPoint, when completed with your Excel file, you should first check accessibility by using the built-in accessibility checker. Keep in mind that it will not find all errors. For example, it cannot detect if information is arranged in such a way on the sheet that makes it difficult for assistive technology users to find. Also, some warnings will be actual errors while others are not. For example, merge cells are okay outside of a table, but create significant accessibility issues when they are within a table. You can click on merge cell warnings in the accessibility checker and it will take you to the cells within the worksheet. The accessibility checker will also alert you if you have not created meaningful worksheet names. By selecting the unnamed sheet and the downward arrow to the right of it, the accessibility checker will provide quick guidance for fixing it. While you should always start your accessibility check with the built-in checker, the accessibility checker cannot check for logical reading order, meaningful worksheet titles, document titles, or uses of color. You should also run a manual check using the quick checks developed by the Accessibility and Policy Unit. Running a manual check will be discussed in more detail in Chapter 7. In review, using cell A1 to provide information and directions to visual elements of the sheet, aligning all information to column A, and providing meaningful naming to all Excel elements such as worksheets, tables, and charts. You are designing equal access to Excel content for your colleagues and community participants with disabilities. For more information about this topic or any of the topics in our series, contact the Accessibility and Policy Unit at accessibilitypolicyunit at dss.ca.gov.